Hey guys, we are in the basement. Today we're gonna do another tech video. This is going to be part four of the Gyrus Restore. And today we're gonna cover uh, a couple more monitor topics. We're gonna talk about restoring and rejuving a monitor using a Sencor CR7000. We're also gonna talk about manually degaussing a monitor using a degaussing ring. And we're also gonna do some cabinet work. We're gonna do some Bondo work and sanding and just kind of getting the cabinet ready for painting. And we're also gonna release, release uh, replace, excuse me, the leg levelers on the cabinet. So anyway, why don't we go out to the garage and start part four of the Gyrus Restore. Okay, here we are. Here is where Gyrus stands today. Um, today we're gonna tie up a few loose ends like bondoing the front. We're gonna start working on uh, restoring the coin door and we're also gonna start some painting on the side here touching up all these scratches um, before we do any of that though I want to talk a little bit more about the monitor because we did do a tube swap um, I have replaced all the capacitors but I gotta be honest I'm not 1000% happy with the tube um, I'm having some issues with it very minor trivial issues that I could probably just let go but I'm not gonna let go because uh, I feel like the tube might need to be rejuved a little bit. Um, I'm having some issues adjusting the colors. It just feels like I'm, I'm kind of fighting the adjustments, which kind of tells me the guns might be a little bit weak. Um, I can actually get a really good picture, um, especially when the lights are off. It's actually very bright in here, so it's kind of hard to tell how good this picture is, but actually the picture is pretty decent. However, there is one issue though where I have some discoloration. Um, if you look here, the ship is red. You can't know if you can tell because of the brightness. Um, the red parts of the ship are red here, but when the ship goes over here, the red parts turn magenta. And what's happening here is the, the tube is kind of magnetized and, it, and it's distorting the colors, okay? And we need to degauze this. Now, every time you turn the monitor on, it actually degauzes itself. There is a built-in degaussing coil, which is this cord, this, this wire that goes around the monitor, um, but it's a weak degauze, okay? And uh, if you have problems with a monitor that's severely been magnetized, and they can get magnetized from speakers, um, Earth's polarity can actually mess with the monitors, uh, and so there's ways to get rid of the magnetization, and that's using a, a manual degaussing coil. And let me just kind of illustrate here what's going on. If I go in the back here and I crank up the red, um, and these are the adjustment pots uh, for the colors. They're on the neck board. We've got red and green drive and then RGB cutoff, and they basically adjust the, the kind of amplification of the colors. So I'm going to go ahead and crank the red which is that one right there. And if we go in front now, the red's gonna be very prominent on the monitor, and it's really gonna illustrate the, the degaussing issue here. You see this kind of bluish color? Um, so the monitor has been magnetized or it's being affected by a magnetic field. And so we could try to get rid of this uh, with a, a degaussing coil. We also can try rotating the cabinet to see if, if it changes um, you know, because the Earth's magnetic field, the polarity of the Earth, the, the compass north, however it works, I don't really know. But you can see I'm turning the cabinet and it went away. It's gone. The distortion is gone. However, look up here. Now we've got this corner is screwed up. So this might be a case where this monitor we can't fix with the degaussing coil, but we're going to try. And uh, let me show you what that is. So this here is a computer monitor and television degaussing coil. I bought this on eBay for about $20. It says here it eliminates magnetic fields in picture tubes, okay? It's an indispensable for color monitor and color television service. Enclosed in, a, this is a 13 inch high impact plastic housing, eight foot cord, blah, blah, blah. Um, this is by GC Tool, it's part number 9317. I think I I paid about 20 bucks on eBay and basically what happens here is you push this button and it kind of create this kind of charges and creates a magnetic field that we can then use to kind of massage 
um, the magnetization out of this tube. And you know what? Sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, I have a centipede. My centipede has a real problem uh, with this. Actually, a very similar problem with the top left corner. I could not get rid of it with this. But let me just show you what this does. This might not work. Um, and actually, I probably should do this once I get the game in the basement in its final position because you saw there, just by rotating the cabinet and, and having the monitor being oriented differently with Earth's magnetic you know, polarity um, drastically changes um, the mag magnetization problem. Um, so let's see if we can get rid of this stuff here. Um, so what we're going to do is hold this a few feet away and we're going to push this button. And you can see how it's messing with the tube there. And we're just trying to massage the mag... We're just trying to massage the issue out of the tube. And if you get really close, you can really mess with the picture. You see that? Um, I don't think you can damage the tube doing this too much. Um, but you're going to realize soon enough if this works or doesn't work. So the bottom right there is mostly okay. Uh, there, see it came back. And I still got an issue in that top left though. Um, I might be able to live with that just because of where it is. Um, Cause the main thing is I want to get rid of this over here because that was affecting the way the ship looked. And I think we're just going to stop here from now. And then again, when I get this in the basement, I'm going to do this again. And, and cause once it's in its final spot, it's actually going to change how it's reacting to the magnetic pull. But uh, this is the tool you're going to use though to get rid of those problems with monitors. And so let's just turn up the red Let's put the red back where it was and let's kind of see what the picture looks like uh, now. So we're just going to turn that back down. Um, and uh, it's still a little too high. And let's come back here. And uh, it's still a little too high, but you can see now the top left here is a little, it's a little dirty looking, which I could probably live with. But the ship now is not turning magenta when it goes over here, it's staying red which is good. The red's still cranked a little bit too high. Let me just turn that down. Okay, that looks a lot better. So, um, but it, it is looking better here. God, I just, that sucks. But uh, it's red and it's staying red. The ship, before the ship was totally turning magenta when it went over here. So, okay, so that's one thing. The other thing here is I feel like the guns might be a little bit weak. I don't know for certain, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna hook my monitor up to my little uh, rejuver, restore monitor tester. And this, okay, here is our Sencor CR7000 restore analyzer and I guess Rejuver will call it. And this is a great tool. Um, it is a piece of test equipment that can also fix the problems that it finds. And it's a wonderful tool. And basically how it works here is um, you hook this up to the tube and we will test and analyze uh, the tube uh, with various tests to see if there's any problems with the guns. Now you want to use this device if you suspect that your tube, um, if your tube is dim, um, if the controls just don't cooperate, if you can't seem to get the colors to adjust, um, if the picture's very dim, um, that's all very good indication that the tube is tired, that the guns have issues, the guns are gunked up um, they, they get, they get kind of burnt up a little bit. And basically how this device works is after you test it, and if you determine there is a problem with the guns, one or more, you then basically, this thing's going to send voltage and it's going to heat up the guns and basically burn all of that crud off and kind of giving them new life. And I've used this thing a whole bunch of times and I've had really great results. Um, sometimes it doesn't do a whole lot. Um, sometimes it does a lot and it's like very noticeable and you're like, wow. Um, but this is, is a great, great, great device to have, especially if you've got a lot of games. Now this particular one, uh, the Sencor CR7000 is probably one of the best ones you can get. Um, I actually got really lucky and got this on eBay for like a steal. It was like a last minute snipe kind of thing. Um, this one can be a little pricey. Um, if you keep looking though, you can get them cheap. I bought this actually from a hospital um, on eBay. I guess they used this to test the, uh, the, the, the CRTs for the uh, test equipment, you know, for the, uh, the EKG or whatever they call it, the little beep beep, you know, kind of thing. And then the thing was pretty much brand new when I got it. And uh, it's just been a really awesome tool. So anyway, let me, let's kind of, um, 
let me show you how to hook it up and just kind of walk you through the setup and all that and then we'll we'll go through the test and and possibly um, use the restore and uh, reju functions uh, and basically this device is divided into two functions uh, the left half here this function knob basically is how you pick what you want to do with the device and everything on this half is testing okay so this is what we're gonna do this stuff first we're gonna use this to test the device and if we find a problem then we're gonna use the functions on this side which is the restore and reju function and it's a progressive um, kind of restore and reju function you have basically varying levels of restore and the higher up you go the more intense it is and the more traumatic it is on the tube and what's nice about this one is that you don't have to go balls to the wall with the rejuve which is a riskier uh, method of restoring because it, it really heats up um, the guns and sends a lot of voltage its way and sometimes if the if the health of the tube isn't too great um, it can't it can't uh, sustain that much voltage and you'll kill the tube so you definitely want to start with the lower um, settings first before you even attempt the higher ones so anyway let's go through and talk about how to hook this up um, the first thing you want to do to hook it up is you want to remove the neck actually you gotta make sure the game is unplugged before you do any of this so um, the game is unplugged uh, make sure it is before you attempt anything like this so we're gonna remove the neck board first okay and uh, so let's go ahead and wiggle this baby off, okay? And then the next thing you want to do is you want to remove the anode cup. Um, I have friends that do this with their restores, and they never remove the anode. I don't believe in that. Um, it says in the manual to do it this way, and this is how I do it. Um, so we're going to go ahead and discharge the monitor. Um, this video is not a discharging video. We've already done the, covered this in other videos, um, so make sure you check those out. So there we go, and let's get the cup off here. And we're just going to kind of take our screwdriver and wiggle this baby off. Come on. Okay, so it looks like it's ready to come off. Okay, so now we have it off, and now we're ready to hook up our device, okay? And this device supports virtually every type of tube that's out there, and it comes with a little book here, okay? And what we want to do is we want to look on our tube and look for the model number of the tube, not the model number of the monitor, the model number of the tube. And you can see this is a Zenith tube here, and the model happens to be right here. This is a 19VM LP22. And we want to take our book, and we want to find that monitor in this book here okay and I'm gonna do all of this setup here before I actually turn the device on okay so it's a model 19 VM which is VM LP 22 model 19 VM LP 22 which is right here okay and this tells us all of the different settings that we need to have for our device um, because every monitor is a little bit different so we want to set this um, CR3 7000 up for our specific tube, okay? So it says here that we're going to need socket number one, okay? Now, if we open up this door, and um, we have all of our various sockets here, and this is for all the different kind of tubes that are out there, and what's nice about this one is that each socket is actually two-sided, okay? So we need socket one, which is this side right here, okay? So why don't we go ahead and hook this up to the gray cord on here, okay, and then we're going to plug this into our tube. Okay, and so let's go ahead and plug this in. And of course I'm trying to do this with one hand, which never works out. Okay, so we've plugged this in, like so. Okay, now we're going to take this, and we're going to plug in... We're going to plug in side one into our tube. Okay, so side one, which is socket one. We're just going to plug that right into our tube, like so. Okay, so now we've made that connection. We've used the proper socket. And then the next thing on here is it says for 19 VM LP22 um, we need to set it to CRT type video one 
and we do that right here on this knob. We set it to video one, okay? And then the next setting is uh, we need to set the vo uh, the bias to uh, 68 volts for the MLP22, and the bias adjustment is right here, and we're gonna turn that to 68 volts. Uh, let me double check that. MLP22. Yep, it's 68 volts. Okay. And then we're going to set our filament volts to 6.3. And the way the filament volts works, right here, is you're going to set it into the range. Okay, so we're going to set it to 4.4 4 to 8. And we're going to set this to 0. And then when we turn this on, we're going to actually do our adjustment to 6.3 with this one right here. So, okay, so we're all set up. So why don't we set up a tripod and we'll kind of go through the process of testing everything. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn the device on. Everything's hooked up. We have all of our settings uh, set except for filament volts, which we're going to do first. It's on minimum. So let's turn this on. Our device is on. This LED is lit. We have it set on the function knob to filament volts. And according to our book, we need to adjust this to 6.3. So we're kind of still in the setup mode right here. So we're going to go ahead and turn this up to 6.3. Okay, so now we're ready to do our first test, which is this one right here called G1 Short. And this is going to basically test for a short. And let me read from the manual. Now, I am not an engineer, but what I'm good at is reading instructions and, and learning things online. And it, it says here the G1 Short test. It, it, this function, it checks for shorts and leakage. Leakage between the first grid, G1, or control grid, and the cathode, and between G1 and the second grid, G2, or screen grid. And basically, these shorts, if you've got a short, um, you'll have a color that's kind of like stuck on, okay? So if, if the screen is always red, or always blue, or green, it usually means that one of the guns is shorted. It could also mean that you have a bad transistor, but this is gonna check, check to see if the tube has the short and not the transistor on the neck board. And so there we go, we tested for G1 short. If it's all green, and each one of these is it represents one of the guns. We have the red, green, green, and blue gun, and we have passed the short test. We do not have a, a G1 short. And there's another kind of short to test for, which is the HK short. And according to the manual, the HK short test determines if a leakage path exists between the filament or heater and cathode. Um, okay, so this is testing for another type of short, um, and we also pass that test. Okay, so the next test is called cutoff and low tracking, okay? And how this works is we want to adjust our guns till each of these LEDs is inside the cutoff area, okay? And if we can't get it in there, then we have an issue with the guns, okay? And also, if um, the guns are swinging around wildly, it also tells you that there's an issue with the gun. Um, so let's go ahead here. Okay, so I'm able to get it into the cutoff, but it still says gun tracking is bad. And if you look on the little cheat sheet up here, it says if all the guns are in the cutoff um, and CRT condition is good, then it's good. However, um, all guns are in the cutoff, but the gun tracking says bad. This means that we have bad low tracking. So we're not passing this test. There is an issue with the guns. And let me read from the manual what it says here. The cutoff and low tracking position of the function switch performs two tests, the cutoff test and the low tracking test. Um, both tests check important performance parameters of a color CRT's electronic guns. And it says basically together the cutoff and emission test thoroughly test the dynamic range of the electron gun. The cutoff test dynamically reproduces the point where the electron gun just comes out of cutoff and begins to conduct current. This is the normal black pitcher level. Um, the cutoff test applies a negative bias, blah, 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 blah. Okay. It also says right here that if we have bad low tracking, um, the likely pitcher symptom is color shading in grays. Um, I'm going to tell you that I, I, I feel that um, I agree with this because the issue I was having was I couldn't get the guns really to turn off all the way. There's always like a weird tint. Um, and I think that's what they mean when they say that you have like bad gray scale because you can't get like black necessarily. So 
All right, so this is telling me that we should now start thinking about restoring the two because we're passing, not passing the low tracking. Let's go ahead and, and go ahead and, and test the emission and high tracking. Um, we do pass that test, and that's the last test. So we have passed all tests ex except for low tracking. Um, so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to think about restoring the tube, okay? Now, um, I say this a lot because I believe this is true. Um, if, if you overdo this, you can destroy the tube. So I like to do this very conservatively. And I normally will only do normal and high, okay? And I won't do them more than one or two times. Um, and I think what we're going to do is we're going to do the normal test, uh, the normal restore, and we're going to do it one time only, okay? And if you look here, there's different uh, ranges uh, or intes intensities of restores. Um, it starts with reactivate. And then it goes to low, normal, high, extended, remove short, and rejuve, okay? And each one of these, basically, as you go around, it's putting more and more voltage on the guns, and it's, and it's putting the monitor through a little more trauma because you're kind of really heating up those guns. Um, so I like to stay in the lower, more conservative settings, and that's what's really great about this particular unit, is that you don't have to go apeshit. You can do the low settings, and they're very conservative, safe settings, and the risk of ruining your tube is very low. So, um, so why don't we go ahead and we have it on normal and this knob here um, has us select the gun and we're going to do one gun at a time. So let's go and do the red gun and we're going to hold this in and it's going to go through two cycles and we're going to basically watch it do its thing there and when this light is off it's, it's done with the red gun. Okay, so we've just restored the red gun. Now let's go to the green one and it says it's ready so let's push this and you can see that it's doing its thing. It's doing it in, in, in kind of two steps. It's heating it up, and then it's waiting, and then it's heating it up. And again, this is a very conservative device. And now let's do the blue gun. And it's heating it up, and it's stopping, and it's heating it up. Okay, so now what we want to do is probably go back and do our test again and see if we pass. And we're not passing, okay? We still have a low cutoff um, problem here. Um, so, now we have kind of a dilemma. Do we do it again? Or do we plug the monitor back in and just see if we see any visual difference? Now, I will tell you that I tend to trust my eyes more than this. Um, what I usually will do is I'll do this again, and why don't we go ahead and do this one more time um, and see if we can get it to test correctly. So let's go ahead and do our red gun first. But I don't like to do this too many times because I feel like it's a little risky. Um, I've, I've destroyed one tube um, doing the reju function, but that tube was so far gone that I was okay with that. It was just kind of like a, like a last ditch uh, uh, last, it was my last resort basically. So now we're doing the green gun. Okay, so now let's do the blue gun. Okay, so now let's go back and do our testing again and see if we can pass. And we're. And we're not passing still. We're still not passing the low tracking. So, you know what? I'm going to stop here, and I'm going to put the monitor together, and I'm going to see if I see any visual difference, okay? Um, I, I could do it again, um, but, but, but what I've found is that I've done it twice now, and if I see a visual difference, if the monitor looks better, I'm just going to stop. Because my monitor wasn't that bad to begin with, and I don't really want to risk overdoing it. So why don't we stop here, and let's put the monitor back together. Okay, I've got the monitor back uh, together and I just plugged the game in. So let's go up front and see if we see anything different with the picture. Um, and yeah, it looks totally different. The colors are all weird. So that means we need to adjust the colors. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. 
I, I suspect that what I just did here is going to be a big improvement. So um, let's adjust the screen, which is the brightness. And uh, the, the easiest way to do this is always with a, uh, uh, with a mirror and not going back and forth like I'm going right now. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get a mirror and I'm going to go ahead and adjust the colors. Um, and by the way, to adjust the colors you do on the neck board, there's red, green, drive, red, green, blue, cutoff. Um, on the flyback down here is the screen, okay, and that's the brightness. And there's also a black level on the 4900, which is back in here, okay. So I'm going to get a mirror and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to adjust all these knobs so I get the picture looking great. So let me be right back. Okay, I've made all my color and brightness adjustments, and the picture's okay. I mean, it's it's probably about as good as it was before. I don't really think that it had any drastic effect on this monitor. The thing about this game, though, is it is a space game with lots of black, so it's kind of hard to see, you know, if the colors have significantly improved or not. Um, but I would say they haven't, and uh, it's about the same. So I kind of have a dilemma, you know, do I, do I hook the uh, restore back up to the tube and hit it again and... Um, but I, I don't think I'm going to do that. I think I, I'm going to wait. I'm going to put this in the basement, see how it looks in the dark after it's all... Okay, it's now a little dark outside, and I'm actually testing the monitor, and uh, I can really see now the colors and all that. And I got to tell you, actually, um, I think it was a success, the uh, Rejuve, because uh, the monitor looks fantastic. And uh, this is going to look really good in the basement, because in the basement I always keep dark. And uh, so anyway, yeah. I kind of fast forwarded into time here and uh, tested the monitor in the dark and it, it looks great. It looks actually badass. So um, I'm pretty happy with where the monitor stands now. So why don't we go back to the past in real time. All right, bye. Just look at it. I just, I love how it looks. I just want to keep looking at it. And I love like the gyro screen. Look at that. Look how badass that looks. Okay, we're going back to the past. All together, and then maybe consider uh, hitting uh, the tube again with the restore, um, because I don't like really doing it too many times because you can ruin the tube to where it just it doesn't work anymore. It's not usable, and I don't want to do that. So I want to play it safe here and do this very conservatively. You know, sometimes I've used this device, and the results are just like, whoa, holy crap, you know. And sometimes I don't get those results. And I would say this is one of those times where um, – I'm not getting anything significantly uh, different uh, as a result. Um, now, it was still not passing the testing, though. Um, I'm actually okay with that because I actually trust my eyes more than this in a way. Um, because sometimes I'll do this, the normal or the high, a couple times. And then I'll look at the picture. Um, and then I'll do the test, and it says that it's still failing. But the picture is amazing. So I will actually stop because I don't care. Because, I, you know what, I'm not... Um, if the picture's good, I'd rather just stop and live with it rather than putting it through another rejuve. So, all right, guys, I mean, that's it. That is how to use the, uh, the restore and the degaussing coil. Um, hope you guys found that interesting. Um, I, I wouldn't say that either of those events today were a success, were they? <laughs> because we still have a magnetized tube, and I'm still not really completely happy with this picture. But the picture's good, don't get me wrong. Um, I wish you guys could see this in the dark because really, it, it's this is not really showing off how it looks because at night when I play this, it looks really good out here. So, okay, so let's move on. So I, I want to show you guys something here um, with the uh, the cosmetics. And by the way, uh, here's um, the metal pieces. In the last video, if you remember, um, we primed and painted them, and now they've dried and they they turned out really nice. I mean, look at that. So that is uh, with a couple coats of primer and then a couple coats of this lacquer um, spray paint. Um, it actually has a slight texture to it, which I'm kind of okay with because it, it kind of almost looks like it's powder coated or something. And I'm going to probably use this same paint for the coin door when we get to that. 
Um, I don't think we're going to have time today to get to the coin door, but I think what we're going to do is we're going to start bondoing the cabinet today um, and filling those holes and, and do the bottom. Um, I do want to show you that I did start trying to touch up the paint. Um, I bought some of these acrylic paints um, at uh, Joanne Fabrics, like a hobby store. You can get these at Hobby Lobby and Joanne Fabrics. And um, I got to say, I'm not too pleased with the results here. Um, this red kind of matches, but it just doesn't really want to stick to this or fill in any of these holes. And I kind of did some tests and uh, not really pleased with it, to be honest. Um, I'm thinking I might go to the hobby store, maybe get some testers model paint. Because these acrylics, God, they just do not want to stick to this at all. So, yeah, I don't know what to do about that. So, anyway, what we're going to do right now is we're going to start bondoing uh, the cabinet. And we don't have a lot of bondoing to do, but we have some. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually tilt the game back, and then we're going to work on it. So, let me go ahead and do that, and we'll be right back. Okay, I've tilted the game on its back, and this is perfectly safe to do. You want to make sure everything is secure and nothing's really loose. And uh, I actually am laying it on some wood there, so it's easier for me to pick it back up. Um, the monitor was all bolted in. Um, I did, actually, I didn't secure the power supply, and it kind of fell off down there, but that's okay. So anyway, the, the objective today is we want to fill in these holes with Bondo. And we're going to let that dry and then sand it. And then also I want to take care of this edge here in the bottom because it's a little bit chewed up. And I want a nice nice corner down here, okay? And also while it's tilted, I, I see that I need some new uh, leg levelers because these are all gone completely. So um, I think I have some in the basement and uh, I might throw some new leg levelers on here while we have the cabinet down. Okay, so the first thing I want to do though is I want to just kind of sand... Um, I just want to sand all this loose stuff off here uh, before we bondo, and uh, so why don't we go ahead and do that. And then uh, I can see here that all this old paint's coming off, and I'm going to... And then we're going to add some Bondo to these holes. Now, if you remember in the previous video, I filled these in with a doll. It actually worked out really great. Um, so that doll is glued in there, and I have one over here as well. And this is really going to make my life that much easier because I don't have to put nearly as much Bondo in here. And uh, so I'm just going to kind of smooth that out real quick before I put my Bondo on. That, that dowel rod actually did a great job. Um, look at that. So we just have to fill that with a little bit of Bondo. So I'm going to set up a tripod. Let me get the Bondo, and we'll just kind of walk through the steps with Bondo. Okay, so we've got all our parts here, and now we're ready to do some bondoing. And, uh, you know, I am not an expert woodworker by any means, but you know what? I've done this a few times, and it actually the results are always great. So I go to the hardware store, and I buy this Bondo. And Bondo is a automotive body filler. Um, it's also great for woodworking, especially for large things like this. You can also do this with other kinds of kind of filler that are in wood putty stuff you can find. But I always use Bondo. I think it works great. It's really tough. It sticks. Um, and it's good stuff. It's about 12 bucks and it comes basically with this can This is the lid and then this kind of activator uh, Hardener stuff and how it works is we want to open this up And we're gonna pour Some of this in our little cup, okay, and this stuff will not get hard Until we add the hardener additive, okay? And it, it, God, it reeks. All right, so we're going to put that in there. And I'm probably going to make a mess here. I always do. <laughs> All right, so let's put this back on. Okay, so there it is. There's the one part, and now we need to add the second part, which is the hardener. And we're just going to kind of add this in here. Um, there is specific amounts you're supposed to put in here. I usually just eyeball it. 
okay? All right? And now we're going to mix it up, and then after that, we got to get to work because this stuff's going to turn to stone quick. So we're going to mix, mix this up till we get a nice uniform kind of pinky salmon color, okay? And I'm just using actually a doll here to stir it up, okay? And now we got to get to work because this stuff is going to get hard soon. So let's start filling holes. So let's go over here. All right, so let's fill this hole here. And I'm just going to use cardboard to kind of fill this in. And I'm not looking to be super neat right now because we're going to sand this all down later. And I just want to kind of get this, fill in the holes with this. And... Uh, uh, I don't think I'm fully mixed up here. Hang on. Okay. So I'm going to kind of just put a little bit on here. Like so. And I'm going to come in with my cardboard. And just kind of fill it in. Get some more. Okay, and I'm going to sand. I'm probably putting way too much on. But I'm going to sand all this off later. And I'm basically just trying to fill in everything fill in the voids that were created okay I'm eh, pretty happy with that and same deal it's gonna come in here and fill that in with our body filler trying not to make as much of a, a mess as I can I mean, ideally, you want to use the least amount of this stuff as possible. I'm using way too much right now, but I'm kind of a messy worker. <laughs> this is my style. But uh, you know what? I sand this all away, so I'm not that worried about it. Okay, I think I'm going to stop there on that one. And then let's come over here, and we're going to try to get this back here real quick. And uh, there's a couple ways to do these edges. Um, I actually just kind of, I'm just going to throw this on, and then when we sand it, I'm going to get it, the edges nice and sharp. So we're just going to kind of come in here and fill this in. Okay, we're done, and uh, yeah, I think I did an okay job. The bottom, eh, I might want to add a little more Bondo here. It's better than it was, but it's not as square as I want it to be. I think I'm going to actually put a little more Bondo on here and go back over it. Um, you can see I definitely used more Bondo than I needed. Um, I'm trying to get the excess off, but this, this stuff back here is just great. This hole here is smooth as can be. Um, that was a big success. Um, same thing over here. So both of these are a big success with the holes. Those are totally filled in. When I paint that, you'll never know there was a hole there. Um, I just need to work on this corner. Uh, another method of doing this is to put like a wood block here um, to get sharp corners. I think I might do that and try this again. Um, it's definitely better than it was. I probably could just live with this and you'll never even notice it because once I paint this black, it's going to look actually pretty nice. But I'm not really happy with this right here. 
Okay, actually, before we go back down to the basement, let me show you guys. I actually went back here and put on a second coat of Bondo on the bottom, and I sand the living heck out of it. And man, does it look much better. That's way better. That's way more acceptable. So it's nice and smooth here. We're all ready for painting. I sanded away all of the excess Bondo. I, I went to town on here, so it was all gone. Um, so we have a nice, smooth transition. Um, I definitely use more Bondo than I should when I'm doing it. Um, I don't know why. I'm just kind of a sloppy worker, I guess. But uh, after I sanded it down, you could see it's it's great. Nice sharp corner here. Um, it's not perfect, but man, is it close. Um, and it's definitely better than it was. You could see what was filled in right here. And of course, this stuff up here is all ready to go too. And that's nice and smooth. That's nice and smooth. And uh, we're pretty much ready now to paint the front of the cabinet. Um, I'm gonna pull the T-molding off. We'll do that in another video. And also, I did actually swap out the uh, leg levelers here. Um, you can see these are the ones that were in there. And, and thankfully, these came out pretty easily. Um, but these are what were left of the leg levelers. Uh, it was originally like this, but not as rusty. And these were all just missing the, the bottom part. And so I just unscrewed these with my channel locks, and then I just screwed some new ones in. And these ones are like the Teflon type. Um, they're kind of like a glider. Um, they move... It enables you basically to slide the game nice and easily on the ground. And, and they're very easy. I mean, you just thread them on here. Um, some of them will have a nut right here that allows you to lock it into a height. Um, I actually usually don't use the nut. I just do it like this without the nut and just screw it in. And then once we stand the game up, um, I'll take the time to make sure it's nice and level and all the heights are the same. I have it about an inch or so up. Um, so there you have it. All right, that's it for bondoing and leg levelers and all that business. Why don't we go back down to the basement? All right, guys, there you have it. That was part four of the Gyrus Restore. Hope you guys enjoyed it. You know, that Bondo stuff is pretty crazy to work with. I kind of, I fully admit I'm messy when I'm doing it. I know you guys are going to totally comment on that Bondo, but you know what? In the end, it turned out pretty great. Um, I had to do a little more sanding to remove the excess Bondo. So I guess the lesson here is don't be a John and use less Bondo when you're doing that kind of stuff. I tend to just kind of overdo it and then just sand the heck out of it. But anyway, I think it turned out great. Hope you guys enjoyed uh, the video. Of course, you know, I release new videos every Sunday. Um, and so if you click that subscribe button, I think you get some kind of alert or something. I'm not sure how that works. But anyway, you should click subscribe. That way you can keep up with all the new videos. And, of course, please check out my podcast, Video Game Outsiders, at videogameoutsiders.com. We broadcast live. We do that podcast live every Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern on the All Games Radio Network at allgames.com. All right, guys, thanks for watching. And you know what? We'll see you later. Goodbye.